All right, guys, good afternoon. This is Done with the Year Zero Report, and this is going to be your daily brief for September 15th, 2022. Uh, I already had a bunch of stories lined up for you guys, as you guys can see over here on the left. We have a few stories to run through. But right before I started recording, we just saw that Argentina's uh, central banks just rose uh, interest rates by 550 basis points. Not 100 basis points. Not 75, 550 basis points. This is exactly what I've been talking about, you guys. Um, I'm going to try to make it short so we don't get too wrapped up in this. Um, I'm obviously heated over it. Uh, it this, is, this is insane. I always said that America will be the last to fall, but we will be the hardest to fall. So as everybody's out at Starbucks or living in the American dream, People don't realize that for the past two years, and even a bit further than that, there's been countries, especially in South America, that their economy is already ripped apart uh, from inflation. And what we're seeing right now is hyperinflation in Argentina, which has already been present, and the central banks did not act in time. Much like I'm talking about how they should have acted here with our inflation problem in the States, or even in Europe, as far back as in 2020, or even 2019. And all these interest rate hikes that we're seeing today and over the last few months of this year are far behind catching up to the inflation of where it's at present. They should be raising rates much like we're seeing in Argentina Argentina, if they actually wanted to reel in inflation. So back over to Argentina, this is crazy. It's This is hyperinflation. This is where their dollar is going to devalue rapidly, running to the to the store with a wheelbarrow of cash like we saw in Germany in, in uh, World War II. Uh, but insane, guys. Uh, I figured, let's just hop over, show you guys uh, Bloomberg real quick and what they're talking about with this. And then we'll move over to the stories I already had planned for you guys. But you guys can see here, Argentina has decided to raise interest rates by 75% in a bid to prop up its currency and curb inflation that's approaching 100%. This is... Uh, this is wild. So the central banks over there, they don't state the exact uh, basis point hike, although it is a 75%, which equates to the 550 basis point hike. So we're going to see this ripple throughout uh, uh, South American countries as it already has, but it's going to increase. Of course, we're going to see the same exact uh, template of inflation pour into the Eurozone, which has already began. We're going to enter levels of what we're talking about here in uh, South America over in the Eurozone, which then, of course, America will fall last, but it'll be the hardest to fall, and we'll see the same thing play out over uh, over in the States. But this is insane, guys. We'll, we'll follow this uh, until the week's end, and we'll see how this develops into next week. But uh, let's go back over to the storyboards, just cover uh, what we're going to be talking about today. So we saw a Harvard study released today, uh, that the jab is more dangerous than contracting COVID itself. So we're going to go into that. And of course, any of these stories I show you, videos, articles, whatever it is, they're all going to be attached below in the description box so that you guys feel confident sharing that out. And you guys have a source and you can vet it yourself. Um, so we're going to go into the Harvard study. We're going to watch a video real quick of the Royal Guard at the Queen's Coffin yesterday. Uh, collapsed, much like we've been seeing uh, with actor, or actors, um, with sports players, Globally, celebrities as well, politicians, news anchors, etc. Right? Um, maybe it's the climate climate change. Maybe, or uh, maybe it's something else. Uh, this is crazy. And we're gonna go over to the Twitter account that we talked about yesterday that uh, predicted the day that the queen uh, the queen's death would be announced. Uh, this Twitter account announced that back in February of this year. They nailed it on the date. Now we have a couple dates that they've posted in the last week to look forward to, one of which is tomorrow, where uh, we're supposed to see something break big uh, in regards to extraterrestrial life. Um, apparently, they're going to make a video, and they're going to release that tomorrow, and it'll be, uh, it'll be at 11 a.m. Central Time. Uh, that they do that tomorrow. We're also going to go over the French Central Bank. If you guys ever see CB, it's just my abbreviation for central banks. doesn't mean the U.S. Fed. It just means whichever country you're talking about, their central bank. So in this case, the French Central Bank says recession will be transitory. Hmm, that sounds awfully familiar of what we've heard over the last two years. Uh, first inflation was going to be transitory, right? Then it was peak inflation theory. Now we're not in a recession because the technical recession definition was altered by the Biden regime in, at the White House. Um, so now we're not in a recession, but we got the French CB saying that 
the recession will be transitory. So we'll go into that, cover a little bit of the markets as we always do. Um, we're going to talk about the debt market, of course. Um, European Central Banks buying uh, mass amounts of European uh, uh, debt in the bonds. So we're going to cover that. And of course, wrap up as we always do with the uh, Eurozone day ahead power, uh, Euro per megawatt, and then also the cyber threat. But I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time. Thank you for being here. Um, if you guys have any anomalies that you're noticing, whether it be economically, um, geopolitically, uh, any medical-related studies that we haven't covered, drop them in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, we are the media now, and uh, we need to use this as a community to be able to get truth out. So I appreciate hearing from you guys. I love reading the comments. Um, so let's hop into these stories Starting right off, we're going to go into uh, that Harvard study right here. Uh, Florida standard vaccine narrative collapses as Harvard study shows jab more dangerous than COVID. Uh, we'll drop down a new study conducted by scientists from Harvard and Johns Hopkins currently in preprint reveals that COVID-19 vaccines were up to 98 times worse than the virus itself. 98 times. Not 98 percent. 98 times very important right there. Times. Insane. Uh, the study is critical of the booster requirements of the American University students, stating in the abstract, using CDC and sponsored, sponsored reported adverse event data, we find the booster mandates may cause a net expected harm. Um, read through this yourself. They attach the report. Um, share this out, though. It's wild. I mean, we were right all along and it's not something I want to be right about uh, but we were so moving right along let's hop over to uh, the Queen's Royal Guard here we're gonna check this out it doesn't have audio um, and it's a short clip so we'll just start from the beginning here it's gonna be this gentleman right here and down he goes yeah must be climate change Damn it. It strikes again. Yeah, one more time for good for good measures. Here we go. Woobity 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 woobity. And London Bridge is down. No pun intended, huh? Run, buddy, run from way over here. I love how these got Royal Guards are all here, but nobody stops, right? The guy from the farthest end of the room has to run over. Alright, we'll stop there. We don't have to keep watching it on a loop. Um heading on over to the Twitter account in question that's happened to predict the date of the, the announcement of the Queen's death. Um, I'm going to butcher the name, so we're just going to call it the question mark account. Question mark account has been active as of recent, and we got 24 hours remain. And this is in regards to uh, what I was talking about with a previous post that, uh, let's see, very soon all will be revealed this Friday, September 16th at 11 a.m. Central Time. What he means by that is that they're going to post a video confirming that there is here we are i will be broadcasting a remarkable video in which the world will finally be introduced to an advanced alien species known as the orcanians and i touched on this yesterday the orcanians is one letter off from an alien species that we see in star trek um, i believe it's next gen that they make their first appearance so take everything with a grain of salt of course especially a, a claim such as this of that magnitude but we'll see what happens tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central Time. And we'll cover that in the video. Um, but as of late, this account's been a lot more active. After the post uh, back in the spring, they were pretty much inactive for a majority of the summer until uh, until September 8th or 9th. I think they popped back up. Um, and you guys can follow this account down below. A uh, little bit of housekeeping real quick. You guys can find the Year Zero Report on YouTube, Rumble, BitChute. Uh, we're on Telegram. Telegram is going to be where you find the most content. Uh, I do upload our daily brief up there as well, but I'm posting throughout mo a majority of the day a ton of stories that I might not be able to fit into this daily brief. And you can find all of that at Year Zero Report on all those platforms. If you like this content and you guys want to support me, keep the lights on over here, buy me coffee, head on over to Year Zero Report Patreon. All these links are going to be linked below. You're going to find a bunch of tiers, whether you just want to support YZR with a $5 pledge or you want to look at some of our other tiers, such as access to the digital library, which is updated uh, frequently, more than once a month with uh, 
with tons of titles. We currently have over, I think, now 150 titles, all downloadable. Um, so check that out. We have a ton of other tiers in there. But I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Um, let's move right along. So going into the next article here, Central French Central Bank Chief Villaroy says any recession will be limited and temporary. Well, most recessions are limited and temporary. Uh, the economic scene is, of course, ran in cycles. So interesting statement there. But uh, in short, it's basically what? Transitory recession. Uh, what a clown world, you guys. What a clown world. Um, if any of these CBs ever wanted to get ahead of any of this, they would have been jumping at interest rates more than uh, more than a couple years ago. So it, it, this is orchestrated collapse, as we all know. Um they're just ushering in the the end of the financial system. They can't kick this can down the road any further. They got to end it uh, so that they're able to issue this new central banking digital currency and uh, perhaps the mark of the beast system or any biblical reference uh, on that note. But transitory recession, you guys. Transitory recession. Pretty soon it's going to be peak recession theory. So uh, we'll call that now. We'll see if we nail that in the next 30 days. Um, let's look at a couple charts real quick. Uh, we got the US dollar here on the daily. We're still making that lower high currently on the RSI. It's a significantly lower high. I would expect that we do see a pullback unless some news driven uh, event occurs pushing us higher. As I outlined before, we have our range top up top and we have the range bottom down here. These blue rectangles, oh, excuse me, just had lunch. Um, these blue rectangles are going to be your demand zones. So we're currently in one right now, and a demand zone is where we expect to see a, a buyer's reaction. So if the price were to fall into this smaller rectangle box, we would expect that there should be a buyer's reaction. Possible wick down to the 200 EMA down here, the blue ascending diagonal line, which is an exponential moving average, but we should see a reaction within that, within that box, if not at the EQ. 10-year uh, yields, of course the debt market's surging surgeon we're just selling debt selling debt like crazy but again of course i've always said like a broken record we flip, flip this top level it's game over markets already don't like where we are uh, commodities are not loving where we're at because they're priced by the dollar we see this break up any higher we're certainly going to uh going to see a huge pullback across the market more than what we've already been seeing 30 year yields same story, right? Although we are seeing a bit of a top, if this sustains, because it is a lower high on the RSI, we can get a pullback back to the about. It's going to be this blue uh, peripherated line, which is going to be the EQ midpoint of a Fibonacci retracement, which are each of those peripherated line levels. Uh, so we would expect a pullback down to that region. I believe I marked it out on the 10 year as well. Yeah, you can see it here, which pairs well with our 50 EMA. It's going to be this orange ascending exponential moving average. Um, don't want to take up too much time on the charts for you guys. Something I am watching is a pump from the euro. I stated this a couple days ago at the beginning of the week. If we do end up flipping this 50 EMA, the yellow slash orange uh, descending diagonal, it's a good long opportunity as long as we flip that into support. Obviously, it's acting as a resistance right now. As you can see in the previous days, we hit it, pulled back. We're tapping on top of a demand zone. So, of course, we get that flip easy long. Uh, we're not going to go over the stock market. We're not going to go over Bitcoin. Uh, we've, we've touched that a bit and it's all going. All assets are pretty much running along the same, the same price action. So if you cover one, you can pretty much get the gist of the rest. But, uh, S and P of course, uh, just hanging around just like everything else. Um, is there anything else I want to go into with you guys? Uh, I think I had one more thing. So let's hop back over to the storyboard. Um, now we touched on it. I was going to say the uh, European central banks are buying mass amounts of euro debt. Uh, not good. Not good. Much like what we were just talking about with the 10-year treasury yields and the 10-year uh, or 30-year yields as well. So there's some charts for you guys, some economic scene. As always, let's head over to the cyber threat to see what we're getting pelted with today. It's a Oh, there we go. Okay, I was going to say that seems more accurate. It seemed light at first. Uh, but this is about what we've seen on average for the last few weeks. Um, I would expect it to ramp up another level going into next week. But a lot of inbound, a lot of outbound. Um, if you're noticing devices are slowed, 
this is why anything running on Amazon Web Services is definitely going to be getting pelted. Let's head on over to Eurozone day ahead pri energy prices. So this is a bit of a relief. Um, it's still extremely high, uh, especially if you look a year ago. So year over year prices. But uh, we are seeing a large pullback. And this is, in my opinion, likely due to the talks that we're seeing in Germany of acquiring a few new power plants under uh, instead of being under uh, private uh, ownership that we'll see the government be able to step in and uh, utilize these uh, these power plants to lower down some prices. So, of course, we're seeing a pullback in the day ahead for tomorrow as people are anticipating a, a good outcome. Uh, we'll see if it is a good outcome. I Again, I don't think that they can provide enough new power in a short period of time to fix the energy crisis that they're already facing. Uh, so these are temporary relief figures that we're seeing. So now uh, the most I'm seeing right off the bat is Germany, which pairs pretty well, pairs pretty well with what I was talking about uh, with the, the German government looking at acquiring a few private uh, power companies. So a down 46% for tomorrow, which is huge. I mean, yesterday, that means this sucker was almost at 400 bucks. Um, but across the board of the Eurozone, we're seeing a pullback with the exception of Greece. Greece up 10% for tomorrow. But uh, this is just going to whipsaw back and forth. I don't follow this every day because I think it's just going to shoot straight up or go straight down. I follow it every day because it is so volatile. Um, and it's something to keep an eye on because this is a... Uh, something you would see in a hyperinflation environment. Although it's only one sector instead of a multitude of sectors, this is the beginning narrative of a hyperinflation environment. Uh, but this is pretty much all our stories we got today. I'm sure we'll get more stuff breaking as soon as I put this video out. It seems like every 15 minutes we're seeing some major development. Uh, but I hope you guys love the content. Please like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Again, uh, anything I've shown you today and any other videos as well, they're going to be linked below in the description box uh, so you guys can share that content out. But I love you guys. Stay true. Stock up. Prep up. Uh, wake up others. But I'll see you guys tomorrow. And tomorrow's Friday. We made it another week. Just about. All right, guys. Love you. Be good.